The Watcher is coming in clutch and no. Oh, what is <laughs> the matchup is going to be elves against goblins, and that's very important. In BFME 2, random is unrevealed. That means they don't know the matchup, unlike they would know in Rise of the Witch King, for example. That's why you will see something like Keypads, Tainted Lands, or the Elven Foresight to scout the area. We have the Elven player Sauron, who's building two Malone trees, and those the spaceman floor around the fortress always gives you the you know the knowledge about the range of your fortress. This range is being able to be protected from the Elven Fortress. Hi, I'm a goblin expert. Now you're only elf expert. <clears throat> Dwarf bro. And on the other side, we see two tunnels also around the fortress coming up for the goblin player. So now, from my personal experience, and I can guarantee you, I don't have too much experience in Battle for Middle-earth 2 yet, the games, they don't last normally very long. Because I personally have the feeling whoever gets like an advantage snowballs his lead up to the victory. So with that being said, we can actually see maybe like four games being finished within 20 minutes. But if the games last how long however, the heroes in this game have a crazy impact. Nuxa, thanks for the subbing for the first time my dude. Appreciate the support and welcome to the channel. Means a lot to me. Nux 3R just subscribed. Welcome to Beyond Standards crew. That's a lot of tunnels around the fortress. Four tunnels into the spider pit start. No goblin cave. Cave pads was used once again to scout. He was able to see the barracks after the two Malone trees. That's the third Malone tree coming up now for the Alvin player. He has archers. And that's also one of the things which is different to Rise of the Witch King because archers in this game are able to deal damage to the buildings. So they all alone will be able to creep a work layer from 100 to 0 quite easily. Well, this game means a lot to me. So I had to sub. Thank you, man, so much. Appreciate that. So glad you are here, and of course we are, uh, you know, this channel is almost dedicated to Battle for Middle Earth games, and this we have a current tournament going on. In the Christmas time, around November and December, we're gonna have also a Christmas tournament for BFME 2 and for Rise of the Witch King at the same time. So stay tuned for this one, and if you wanna get those notifications, announcements, and if you wanna just be up to date, I would highly recommend you guys to join our Discord, because that's the place where we're gonna announce the tournaments, and that's the place where you need to be if you want to participate. And that's what I'm saying. Look how much damage they are able to deal. Level 2 is unlocked. He has Elven Foresight, which will give him a lot of vision. And during all this time, he's creeping at the same time. The Goblin layer at the bot uh, the work layer at the bottom right side. And once again, Sauron is able to adapt extremely fast. He was just like 5 minutes ago playing the tournament games against Falcon in Rise of the Witch King. And now, he's switching instantly to BFME 2 for defending his number one spot. That's talent. That's why our tournament is also called Super Talent. Go to the trees. Uh, he can deal damage to the creeps. I believe the damage output against the buildings, against the enemy buildings, isn't the best, Falcon. Alright, he has used foresight on this Elven Arches. What does it do besides giving you vision? Foresight, what? Gives a range bonus. Okay, range bonus it gives. 35% range. So you are able to extend your range. Uh oh, slap him. You you kill my home. I will take your life. Take the money. Take the money. Yes, yes. Oh my goodness. What a unlucky moment for Luxus. Oh, never mind. This troll is like, he doesn't know what to do. This troll is a mean one. Slap. <laughs> And by the way, did I already mention that the creeps here are mean? They are by far not as weak as they are in Rise of the Witch King. This troll is gonna be, an, you know, able. What is this troll doing? This troll has actually some serious issues. I believe he needs to go to the dock or something, you know? He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know what to do. The Malone tree has been taken down. Remember, the buildings here in BFME 2, in compared to Rise of the Witch King, are actually quite squishy. Only 1040 health for a Malone tree. The tunnel has, I believe, even less. Yeah, only 1,000. So the mine shafts from dwarves, they are quite tanky. Okay. The spiderlings are able to disengage for now. We have also some goblin warriors on the field. And also the builders are way tankier in this one than in Rise of the Witch King. But the wall hub is way more expensive. So you are not able to build a wall hub to save the builder most of the time. Since it's just too expensive. Foresight is on cooldown, 3 power points collected, 450 command points available for the Canadian player Sauron. He has also a lot of units around this side, including Lancers. Cave pads, 
By the way, Keyfets is very strong in this one. Not only nullifying the enemy leadership, but also the bonuses from the buffs. So, for example, Rallying Call is going to be completely nullified. And you also lose quarter of your armor and quarter of your damage on top of that. So, Keyfets is really, really very, very strong here. Like all the debuffs. Fissure is coming up as the production building number 4. Spider Pit level 2 for the Spider Riders. But Luxus is actually holding himself for now. Sauron has to disengage. And he has also a stable. Remember, Lindens are not existing in BFME 2. There are a lot of units which are not existing in this game, which exist in Rise of the Witch King. And that's one of the major differences between these two games. The expansion Rise of the Witch King offers you almost in every single faction way more units. And on top of that, you have a full new faction, the Engma, which does not exist in Battle for Middle Earth 2. So there are a lot of differences indeed. Not even talking about the balance changes in differences. Okay. And also Foresight, you know, pretty nice actually. Extending your range by 35% makes you shoot from downtown. Pretty good. Nice body blocking here from Sauron with the lasers. In this way, archers can deal free damage. Very important, those kind of positionings. But I believe he will be forced to disengage anyway. But he's buying some time. He's holding himself, trying to crap or, or trap the enemy units, which is pretty efficient. Six power points collected, five power points collected. In the Barrow expansions for the Goblin factions, unlike in Rise of the Witch King, don't increase your command points by 75. Fissure sure is level 2. He will of course get the chance to recruit some Keef Trolls if he wants to. Half Troll Swordsmen, as you can see, are not existing. Fire Drakes, as you can see, are not existing either. Okay, this Malone tree is gonna be taken down, and that's one of the weaknesses of this. Uh, of you know, one counter attack can actually make you lose like 10 Malone trees in like one minute, because the Malone trees and also tunnels are extremely squishy. Seven power points almost collected. 350 command points only for Sauron. 650 command points for goblins. Spider riders are chasing down these lancers. And the first hero is going to be Glorfindel. And you gotta you gotta love Glorfindel in this one because Blade of Purity, yes, it makes you invincible for like 10 seconds. You are like Thanos with, you are like Thanos with six infinity stones for 10 seconds. Wow, that doesn't sound too crazy, you are saying, but 10 seconds can be a long duration. Especially if this guy is all about to kill your fortress or something. 10 seconds in an RTS game is a long, it's a long time. And if you think Blade of Purity is busted in Rise of the Witch King, then you are allowed to see that in Battle for Middle Earth 2, my boys. The Beholder? No, the Beholder is getting crushed. Oh, he was all about to go home with his Yabba Dabba 2 wagon, but he was not able to do that. Not today. Actually, Luxus is everywhere. And once again, this dude, without level 3, isn't the strongest. And half all pikemen are bullying him quite hard. And he has to now run for his life. But this is not his tunnel. Pressing and abusing the S tactic. Looks like he will be outrun by this half troll pikemen. So he might go down. I think I gotta gift it up. Yes, my dude. <laughs> you gotta gift it up. Indeed. Like 150 people gotta gift it up like 20 minutes ago. Anyways, congratulations on the gift itself. Uh, 600 command points available for elves and 800 command points available for goblins. Small on tree is gonna go down and look at this trash shulking in the chat. Do you see that? He's saying to his opening Sauron, you suck. <laughs> okay. There are, there are some pikemen coming. Oh, the commitment, though. Look at this surrounding. Host lemur. Yeah, host advantage is huge in this game. So Malone 3 is gone. The barracks is gonna follow up as well, eventually. Beautiful trample with the lasers, but is this gonna be enough to save today? I don't know. He has no pikemen to counter those spider riders just yet. His command points kept. That's why he can't. they can't come out. Do you see that? They are stuck. They can't join the battlefield. You need command points, but he is even losing command points instead of increasing that by losing these Malone trees over and over again. Looks like he will be able to save... Nah, never mind, it's going down indeed. Elven player is now dropping down to 400 command points, and he has almost no command points available. And dropping down now to 350. Arrow volley is picked, it's gonna be used. Arrow volley has no animation in this game, will fire immediately multiple shots. 
But unlike in Rise of the Witch King, it's not gonna leave fire on the ground, which will deal constant damage. But I like this concept of this arrow volley a bit more, because it what can be useful also without stun. Let's be real, the arrow volley in Rise of the Witch King is kinda very useless if you have nothing to stop the enemy movements, unless he's not paying attention, which good players always will. And this one doesn't deal as much damage, but it can work every single time, since it can't be missed, pretty much, you know? It has no animation, it will hit multiple times, and damage anyway. Glorfindel is level 4 now, uh, Blade of Purity is on cooldown, Wind Rider is gonna double the armor, 100% armor, 40% speed, and then the Starlight with level 8, not with level 10, will give you, um, look, all allied units, monsters and heroes in a large area around Glorfindel are healed while active, Allied Horde uh, replenishes its unit while it's active. Allied units gain armor and damage while it's active. Enemy units are scared while active. So it's multiple things at the same time. Pretty similar uh, to the one from the Rise of the Witch King. Avoid fighting them. Hard counter system, by the way. So Trample deals more damage, but Pikemen are dealing way more damage to the horses. Big commitment, he might lose those lenses for that reason, but it's a level 2 tunnel, it's always nice if he can take it down. It's gonna be close! Oh, kill it! Oh, okay, he will not be able to escape this, but it's fine. He was able to take away 75 command points, but it's fine for the goblins because they have 900 command points available for now. But surprisingly, Sauron is able to hold himself in the game for now. A goblin player might need giants eventually. Lances are gonna be able to not escape this, unfortunately. They were almost level 3. Level 4, that's the only man who can make a difference. He will be able to save this Malone tree at least for now. But goblins, they have so much money now, right? They have so much money. 950 command points. Lumber mills to support the money even further. And that's a huge goblin army coming at you. Using Tainted Land for 35% armor buff. In the version 1.09, that was giving you double armor, so it's nerfed big time. 1000, that's the full. Arrow Valley is on cooldown. Would be nice in a situation like that. But I believe Luxus can have a, you know, have a, has a feeling for the cooldowns. If you play this game for a long time, you know when what is going to be available once again. A lot of money. Over, over, almost 2000 now. 10 power points collected. He has to get some more units on the field though. Archers, archers, archers. Double barracks. Power points are rising to the sky. He lost his Malone tree, but that's fine. Glorfindel in the meantime is doing his job, getting level 5, destroying those tunnels left and right. Almost 12 power points collected for the Elven player, Goblin player on the other side is 9 power points after the Whiteman of Dunland summon, which is on cooldown for now. Look at him hitting like a track, boys. It's a level 2 building, by the way. Do you see his damage output? That's crazy. Half a level from killing a building too. And also, heroes are able to level up way, way faster in this game, unlike in Rise of the Witch King. So hitting from level 1 to level 4 is gonna happen in no time. Which also makes heroes like Ganda, for example, way more useful in this game in compared to Rise of the Witch King. 10 power points collected, multiple tunnels next to each other. He might be losing the builder here, unfortunately. Yeah, the builder is going down. That's the second build that Sauron is losing. The damage is broken, yes. Hey, Chambash, welcome, dude. How are you doing today? Oh, oh. Slap. Run, you fool. This troll, what is he doing? Really, I'm actually curious what this troll is doing. Also, the builder from Lux is going down. Glorfindel might be in trouble. Blade of Purity is on cooldown. Does he have heal? That's the question. Yeah, he has heal for the worst case. I believe he's fine regardless. He's actually quite slow. Or the goblin units are just too fast on, on uh, you know, when he's on foot. Uh, Elvin hero Glorfindel. Oh, the spider rider is going down. Actually, Lux is throwing now. He had such a huge advantage, but he wasn't able to close the game yet. I mean, this game isn't over yet. The Watcher might make a difference, though. The Watcher is available. And actually, I'm happy about the game number one. It's quite entertaining. Back and forth game. The Watcher is coming in clutch and knocking down the entire Elvin army. Nice, Ooh. Nice, Ooh. But I, I'm, you know, I gotta be honest, I'm not a huge fan of such a move. Ideally, you wanna combine that when you go for an attack. Like, if you have a huge army approaching, and he is, of course, forced to group to defend himself, then you wanna use it, so you have a follow-up. 
you know you can follow up with an attack of goblins or whatsoever to deal some damage afterwards if you use it randomly and there is nothing else happening you will have the time to recover as he has for example for now now you are grouping but now you should be using it now here's some lancers and also heroes around and i believe he will be having now much easier time to defend himself but it's a scary army regardless uh, and summon is available and summon ideally you want to use it offensively and not defensively okay fiesta the malone tree here it's gonna be taken down it's almost level two but it's unfortunate he's dropping down to 400 command points his command points kept once again the mirror of gladiel Wildman of Dunland summon, Erovole is on cooldown, Glorfindel can't be everywhere at the same time, and the Elven base is falling apart. As the barracks number one is going down, there is only one more remaining. Look at the Wildman of Dunland, they are able to steal so much money from the Elven player. Do you see the money dropping down? That's because of the pillage. Foresight is gonna be used. Looks like you wanna go for a sneaky counter attack. Foresight into the end summon. Where is the fat end? That is the fat end. And by the way, this part, when I upload this video to the YouTube channel, this part is always copyrighted. Because the dudes are, for whatever reason, putting in some copyrighted music when the ends are summoned. Why would you do that? Last time I uploaded that to the YouTube channel, I got a notification, you are copyright striked. Why? And then I, they show you the details, you know, and the detail is like, because you are putting the song. Guys, please remove that in the new version. Don't do that. It's horrible for the content creators, trust me on that one. Oh, that was close. Oh, 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 Blade of Purity time, boys. Let's go inside the jeans. Do it. Starlight. Can he do it? Use Blade of Purity. What are you doing? Come on. Nice. Now 10 seconds, boys. 10 seconds. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, this guy is dealing no damage. Upgrade is coming in. Heal is on cooldown. Oh. Come on, it. Oh. <laughs> No way! Do you guys see this HP from the fortress? That's so unlucky! Tom Bombadil! Save Middle Earth, my dude! Save Middle Earth! Yes! Tom Bombadil is doing it! Beautiful Sonic song! Tom Bombadil is the MVP! The GOAT! Nice! He was dancing around. He's like, don't worry, Sauron, I got this! I got this! I mean, that's a nice thing. He's saying so bad. Bye bye, rank one. But Tom Bombadil is still the MVP, in my opinion. He was dancing around, you know, like, don't worry, guys, I got this. And then just last hitting the fortress. <laughs> but that's it anyway. He has almost no money. The, uh, the fortress is quite low, and I believe he won't be able to defend himself. What a Fiesta game, and that's only the game number one, ladies and gentlemen. We have at least three more games to go, since this is going to be a best of nine challenge for the number one spot. And Luxus, by winning the first game, is getting one step closer to the point in which he can kick Sauron out of his place and grab himself the number one place instead. So the German player has literally the chance to become the number one in the top 10 list of BFMA 2 1.9 version 2 players. As the fortress is falling apart, he has no money replacing it. Horst Lehmer is gonna be his, face, uh, you know, his famous last words. As Luxa is saying, why are you so quiet? GG's well played.